Argentina is a world-famous football-playing nation with the greatest players in its history like Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi. Sometimes, it may seem like football is the only reason for the citizens of this South American nation to be happy as their economy has been in a huge crisis for several decades, making life harder in Argentina. Its annual inflation rate soared past 70% last July, the highest rate in three decades. Argentina is currently battling inflation dating back to the 1980s. People have gotten used to endless inflation because no regime which has ruled the country in the last few decades has had a proper plan to move the nation out of this ongoing economic crisis. But inflation rates skyrocketed suddenly as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, coupled with Russia's war in Ukraine, shrinking global food supplies, and tighter energy markets. According to current estimates, four out of 10 people in Argentina live below the poverty line. Their economy is highly dollarized, giving the Argentinian peso a very low value, resulting in high prices for everything. Prices are rapidly changing without any control, and it's difficult for people to guess the price of a common commodity like a bag of rice or newspaper within a space of two or three days due to the highly variable nature of the market. Now the Argentinian economic crisis is totally at a new level, with the series of geopolitical incidents that happened globally over the last two to three years. You already know the topic of today's video, and we're going to analyze case by case to understand what happened to this once wealthy nation that was richer than France and Germany at the turn of the last century. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, this South American nation experienced huge economic growth with the help of large foreign revenue generated through the export of beef and wheat to Europe. As their main trading partners made discriminations against their products, the Argentinian government was angry with the European nations and boycotted foreign imports as much as possible, making the Argentinian economy largely closed off and self-sufficient in the 1930s. This resulted in the decline of their economic growth, opening the door for persistent inflation. With the government's continuous mismanagement of the economy, inflation rose to a triple-digit value from 1975 onwards. After suffering with this bad economic situation for several years, a set of economic reforms were introduced to Argentina under the leadership of President Carlos Menem in 1990. He tried to reduce the main economic responsibilities on the government through privatizing, deregulating, cutting some tax rates, and reforming the state. His regime ended the hyperinflation phase by pegging the exchange rate with dollars and backed the Argentinian Austral substantially with American dollars. According to the exchange rates recorded on January 1, 1992, 10,000 Australs were equal to one US dollar. In an effort to control the hyperinflation that Argentina was experiencing, their standard monetary unit, the Austral, was replaced with the peso. So 10,000 Australs were equal to one peso, pegging the new Argentinian monetary unit with dollars. These reforms really made a huge positive impact on the economy of the South American nation, which was moving forward with hyperinflation. During the period between 1991 and 1992, their real GDP grew more than 10% a year before slowing down to a normal rate of 6% in the next two years. The major economic issue in that period was the rise of the unemployment rate with the inflexible labor laws and high taxes on formal employment. After a brief period of steady economic growth, the Argentinian government re-entered a phase of economic recession in 1998. This small recession later developed into a full-scale economic depression three years later with the help of different factors. The economic recession was triggered by the 1997-98 East Asian currency crisis and the 1998 Russian currency crisis which created fear among investors from developed countries regarding the investments in developing nations like Argentina. On the other hand, these crises also hit the Brazilian economy hard, which was Argentina's biggest trade partner at the time. However, the economy appeared to be showing some signs of recovery in the early 2000s. President Carlos Menem, who drove the economy out of the hyperinflation situation, was replaced by a new president, Fernando de la Rua. As a response to this ongoing recession, the newly appointed Argentinian government made the decision to raise taxes with the aim of reducing the budget deficit. However, it affected the economy, which had been in a slow recovery phase, by turning most of the economic charts negative. 
In 2001, the economy was in a phase of further shrinkage and some cabinet ministers were not happy about the economic policies of the new president. So, some of the ministers resigned from office, weakening the existing government. Then President De La Rua reappointed former economic minister Domingo Cavallo, who saved Argentina from the hyperinflation conditions experienced in the early 90s as their new minister of economy. But his policies and tactics were totally different from the way he managed the problem under Carlos Menem's regime. Cavallo also introduced two more tax packages. Cavallo introduced a parliamentary bill to switch the exchange rate link of the peso from the US dollar to a combination of the dollar and euro. At the same time, the president of the central bank, Pedro Po, officially advocated dollarization, allowing the replacement of pesos with dollars one to one. But Poe's policies were somewhat different from the policies followed by De La Rua and Cavallo, and as a result, Poe was fired from his job. Cavallo introduced a system of preferential exchange rates for exports, applying different exchange rates for different types of buyers or sellers by government decree rather than following the same exchange rate for all. With their poor economic policies, Argentina entered into a debt trap by mid-2001 creating fear about official default as the total debt amount grew so fast that it exceeded the repayable capacity of the Argentine economy. Finally, Argentina was officially declared a partially defaulted nation in January 2002. Argentina went through political and social unrest alongside the economic collapse and five presidents were appointed within a period of two weeks. Finally, Eduardo Dualde was appointed president and the economic recovery process proceeded under his leadership. Minister of Economy Roberto Lavagna did a great job stabilizing prices and exchange rates in that situation, saving Argentina from a hyperinflation situation. Nestor Kirchner was appointed as the president in 2003 and he developed soybean, soybean oil and meal production which boosted Argentina's export revenues. Many sectors of the economy were revolutionized, including services like the National Postal Service, the San Martin Railway Line, the water utility serving the province of Buenos Aires, and Aerolíneas Argentinas. Kirchner's economic policies were much more successful, and he liquidated all the Argentine debt worth $9.8 billion to the IMF in a single payment with help from Venezuela. Nestor didn't run for re-election in 2007, and his wife, Fernández de Kirchner, was appointed as the president. She continued Nestor's economic policies, further improving export revenues and nationalizing many companies and institutions. Economic growth resumed under the two Kirchner regimes at a rate of around 6% till 2011. However, in 2012, they again experienced a considerable increase in inflation rates and rapid depletion of dollar reserves of the country. As a precautionary measure, the government limited access to dollars in June 2012, and for that reason, black market dollars appeared in the market with higher exchange rates. The economic crisis widened step by step, and inflation rates were recorded at 39.9%, one of the highest rates to date, pushing the South American nation into further trouble. Mauricio Macri was appointed as the new president in 2015, and the previous government handed over an officially defaulted nation to him. As a first step, Macri released the exchange restrictions, exposing the peso to a huge devaluation. In January 2016, it was devalued to 44 cents. Meanwhile, unemployment rates reached double-digit figures because of the tight economic policies and the multiplication of layoffs in the public and private sectors. Inflation rates reached 41.7%, with a fiscal deficit of around 4.8% in 2016, and GDP also fell by 1.9%. Within a two-week period, oil prices increased by 51%, flour by 110%, chicken by 90%, and noodles by 78%, making life harder for the majority of people in Argentina to supply their essential food items. Macri was unable to fulfill any of the promises that he gave prior to the election as he had no proper policy to move out of the problem. In 2018, the currency crisis of the South American nation reached a critical point when the peso lost half of its value against the dollar, 
In a rapid response to this, the IMF gave a loan worth $57 billion to Macri's government to stabilize the economy. But Macri failed again, further worsening the crisis, and he lost political power in the 2019 election. The newly appointed government of Alberto Fernandez had no strength to resist arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, and the only option was to print money to finance cash handouts and salary programs, resulting in a further increase in inflation rates. The economy of Argentina had already entered an economic death spiral as a result of the pandemic situation and other global crisis situations between 2020 and 2022. Fernandez had no option but to get the support of the IMF again, as no other country or institution wanted to lend them money. According to the negotiations, Argentina pushed to repay the payments owed from the first program as a priority. But the new loan was given in installments to avoid the things that happened under Macri's government. Currently, the Central Bank of Argentina is running out of foreign revenue, and it's said that their reserves are less than half of the total they had in 2019. According to the negotiations they made with the IMF, Fernandez's government is running a tight economic policy to achieve the goals set in the IMF deal. Still, they are not showing any signs of healthy recovery as they missed several opportunities to stabilize their economy previously in several instances. This economic crisis is further worsened by the political disagreement between President Fernandez and his powerful Vice President Cristina Kirchner. Economic Minister Martin Guzman resigned from the post due to this political tension and Sergio Massa was appointed as his replacement. Taking up new duties, Massa promised to cut back export tariffs and stop printing more money, even though he had no proper plan to do so. Nothing can be predicted, as their politicians have no long-term political or economic vision to move this nation totally out of this economic danger.